Hi, everybody. It is Monday, May the 4th. Today, I'm going to teach you about uh, Newton's method, which is in section 4.5 of your textbook. Here are the notes. I will call mine answer key. Okay, and so here is Newton's method. It says, let's assume that we are trying to find the solutions to an equation f of x equals 0. So, for example, let's say x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, an equation like this. And let us also assume that we know some point x0 is close to a solution. If we draw a tangent line to f of x at the point x0, comma f of x0, and if we call this tangent line tau, I think that's the Greek letter tau, then tau will usually intersect the x-axis at a point x1 whose tangent line intersects the x-axis even closer to the solution that we want. As a picture, it looks like this. So here's what we're talking about. I will draw a graph. Okay, this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. And I'm just going to come up with some random function. Like this. And we will call this y equals some function of x. <coughs> okay, now the solution to the equation of this function would be right here on the x-axis. Okay, so if we set f of x equal to 0, we would be finding that point right there on the x-axis. And so then what the paragraph above is saying, it's saying we're trying to find um, the solution to this equation. And it says, let us also assume that we know that some point x0 is close to the solution. So the solution is that x-intercept, that dot. Let's say we know that this x0 is close to the solution, right? And what it's saying is if you take that x0 and if you go up to the function up here that corresponds to x0, and then draw the tangent line. Notice that the tangent line at that point will now hit the x-axis at a point closer to the solution. Okay, so if we draw a tangent line to f of x at the point x0, f of x0. I'm just reading the above paragraph again. And if we call this tangent line tau, so this red tangent line, we could call it tau, then tau will usually intersect the x-axis at a point x1, <coughs> whose tangent line intersects the x-axis even closer to the solution we want. Okay, so it's saying then if you then look at x1 and you go up to the function and then do the tangent line there, you will see, oh, hey, here's x2 that's even closer to the solution we want. And then you would go up from x2 and do the tangent line and you can see 
if you continue to do these iterations, we should run into our solution at that blue dot. Okay, and so that's essentially Newton's method. All right, and so the key point there is that each tangent line each tangent line has an x intercept closer to the solution. This, by the way, is the corresponding y value of that first point. That would be f of x0. That's how we get the y value. OK, and so what we're going to do down here is we are going to find the equation for the tangent line tau in point slope form. And it says, in point slope form, the equation for the tangent line tau is shown there. So why exactly is that the equation for tau? Because point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and so you see how this, this first tangent line, that's what we've called tau. And we have a point on the tangent line, which is x0 and f of x0. That's like our x1 and y1. So this goes in for x1. It's a specific point. There's the y value, which can go in for y. 1. Okay, and that's what they have down below here, right? See how they've got x0 there and f of x0. The slope of this tangent line would be equal to the slope of the blue graph at that x0. And of course, the slope of the blue graph is given by f prime, the derivative. And so that's why the slope of the tangent line is f prime at x0. So that's where they're getting the equation of the tangent line tau in that form. <coughs> and um, since tau intersects the x-axis at the point x1, 0, you can see that's the point x1, 0. We're going to plug that point into our equation here. So x1 is going to go in for x right here, and 0 goes in for y. And we end up getting 0 minus f of x0 is equal to f prime of x0 times x1 minus x0. <coughs> and what we are going to do is we're actually going to solve this little equation for x1. Okay, so we'll go down here. It says then if we add the following restriction, the restriction that we have to put in place is that f prime of x0 cannot equal 0. <coughs> and the reason for that is because this term ends up on the bottom of a fraction, and you can't have 0 on the bottom. Okay, but here's what we end up getting.
I'll do it up here for starters and then um, continue down below. Uh, 0 minus f of x0, that would just have negative f of x0 like this. And I said that we were going to try to solve this for x1. So notice we've got x1 minus x0, and then you're multiplying by f prime of x0. So I'm going to divide both sides by f prime of x0. And now I will... <coughs> I'll put the result down here. We have x1 minus x0, so we get... x1 minus x0 is by itself, and on the other side we have negative f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. Okay, and so therefore to get x1 by itself we would just have to add over the x0, so I would get positive x0 over there and then minus this fraction. And so you can see that the x1 comes from doing a whole lot of operations with x0. Okay, so x1 is equal to that in terms of x0, and then it says where x1 is an even closer point than x0 means x1 is closer to the solution that we want than x0 is, as depicted in the diagram on the page before. Okay, and then you can generalize this because we could figure out x2 in terms of x1. So if, if I then wanted to do x2, then these would all be x1s in here, as we'll do in the examples, okay, but we'll do that later. Okay, so if you look at the indices, um, this one is one more than all of the indices over here. And so that's where the generalization comes from. Right down here, x subscript n plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. Okay, and so if I put 0 in for n, I would get this formula up here. And so on. If I put 1 in for n, then I would get the formula for x2. <coughs> Okay, and so using this formula over and over is called Newton's method for solving equations. So what does this look like? Find Example 1, find an approximation for the square root of 2. Really, we want to solve x squared minus 2 equals 0. Okay, because if you tried to solve that, I'm going to erase this here, guys. I'm just showing that if you tried to solve this, we would get x equals plus or minus root 2, technically. Um, okay, but this would give us a solution for root 2. Okay, so that's really the equation we want to solve. Let's take a look at the function. x squared minus 2 starts here. Goes through here and here. OK, 
Okay, so this is what, roughly what x squared minus 2 looks like. And the square root of 2 is, of course, that, 1.41. 1.41. Four two one three five six. Okay, and so we're going to see if, if we can get that answer using Newton's method. And so, of course, like the question becomes, why would we use Newton's method? It's really kind of an archaic, um, old school method, right? Um, which it is, and that's true. Uh, the cool thing about it, though, is I'm pretty sure that it's programmed into your calculator, and that is how your calculator finds zeros. And so that's why we teach you this, this old school method, um, because now that we have calculators, we go, hey, these are the little programs that are in our calculators to, to make things easier with technology. Okay, so our Newton's method formula is this. xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. And our function is y equals, actually, why don't we do function notation, f of x. f of x is equal to x squared minus 2. So f of xn, you would just plug xn into your f of x function. It would be x subscript n squared minus 2. And then the derivative is just the derivative of that, which would be 2 times xn. Power would go down by 1. The derivative of negative 2 is 0. So our Newton's method formula for this particular function will look like this. We should put that in brackets. All right, and now to get this uh, formula going, what you need to do is pick a point that is close to that solution. Okay, the solution looks like it's somewhere between 1 and 2. We actually know the solution is here. I did that. I cheated the calculator. Okay, but we would just pick a point that is close to that 0. Like maybe, for example, 3. And then the idea is that you go up to the function and you draw a tangent line and the tangent line hits at a point that is closer to the zero. And the more iterations you do, the closer and closer the red dots will get to the actual solution. So let's start off with x0 equals 3. So if I put 0 in for n <coughs> into the formula, we would get x subscript 0 plus 1 equals x0 minus x0 squared minus 2 divided by 2 times x0. Okay, so I'm going to put 3 in for x0. So we have 3 minus... 3 squared minus 2 divided by 2 times 3. And of course, x subscript 0 plus 1, we could have just written as x1. Okay, so if I do this, um, let's see. We are going to get 3 minus in brackets. Three squared minus two divided by 
2 times 3. You have to put the 2 times 3 in brackets on the bottom. Otherwise, it won't divide by both of them. Okay, so there's my, my first <coughs> iteration, 1.83 repeating. Okay, so there's x1. And that is a little bit closer to that answer of 1.41. Okay, then of course the 3 is. Now x2 is going to equal x1, plugging x1 into the formula, minus x1 squared minus 2 divided by 2 times x1. So I have to take the 1.83 repeating and plug it in here. So you can see this is quite the process. Okay, so then I would have to do that and go x2 is equal to, goodness, how am I supposed to do this? I guess I could go answer minus answer squared minus 2 divided by 2 times answer. And actually, as it turns out, guys, there's an even better way to do this where it's really less labor intensive. And I'll show you how to do that with the calculator. Okay, but our second iteration, x2, is 1.46. 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. Okay. Okay, so you can see that that's getting closer to the real answer, 1.41. Okay. And so on. And so we would continue this process... You actually continue this process until your um, until your x's hit a point where they repeat. So if I were to do the next one, and if I got the exact same answer as x2, I would know that I'm at my solution. Okay. All right, and actually what you can do on the calculator is a little trick. The first iteration was like this, 3 minus... 3 squared minus 2 divided by 2 times 3. Okay, and so that was our first answer, the 1.83 repeating. Then what you do actually, guys, is I want to get that first line back onto my calculator again. And the way to do that is you go second function enter, because you want to get that word entry in yellow that function going. So it gives me that line before. And all you do now is you just replace your first x0 with the word answer. And what it'll do is it'll put the 1.83 in. And then since you have answer in there, it will then put the next answer in there automatically. And it will continue to do that for all of the iterations. So, and you've got to be careful, though, because you just want to put the word answer in for spots that have an x0. Sometimes 3 shows up in the equation that's not possibly like one of the numbers you put in. So you've got to make sure that you leave the 3s that are part of the equation and you just replace uh, the x0 with answers. Answer. Okay, so that first three, that was an x0. So here was an x0, an x0, and an x0. Okay, so I need to replace that with answer. I need to replace that with answer. <coughs> and I need to replace this three with answer. And now I can go bang. There's the 1.4621. And now I can just press enter again. And that will give me x3 x3 equals 
1.414999843 and then press enter again and you can see that's a little bit different so x4 is equal to 1.414213 uh, 78 and then we press enter again and we get x5 is 1.414213562. And press enter one more time. And you can see that x6 is exactly the same as x5. So we have our solution. There's x5. And it looks like it's a pretty good approximation to the real answer up there. Pretty much bang on. <coughs> All right, and so that is Newton's method. Okay, now um, if you don't have a graphing calculator, I do have some instructions for possibly um, being able to sort of download a virtual one like I have here. Um, I'll send you a link in this email, in the email as well, and you can then maybe get a virtual calculator on your computer or laptop. Okay, this process may even work on a scientific calculator as well if you have one of the calculators that shows you what you're typing in and then you could just go back and replace, you know, your, your x0 with the word answer. Um, it could probably work on a scientific calculator as well. But if you do want a graphing one, I will send you a link for that, and hopefully that will work for you. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, so um, if I ever give you a question like this, they usually show up on the quiz and maybe one on the test. Um, here's how I would get you to present the answer. So find an approximation for the cube root of 12, accurate to five decimal places. Really, if you just went to the number of decimal places that they give on the calculator, that would be good. So this really comes down to solving. How would we get the cube root of 12? You'd have to solve x cubed minus 12 equals 0. Okay, and the graph of this looks like this. y-axis, x-axis. f of x is equal to x cubed minus 12. It is a cubic with a y-intercept of negative 12. And it does something like this. Okay, so you can see that it hits the x-axis somewhere between 2 and 3. Okay, so that would be the solution to our equation. Something between 2 and 3. If you wanted to verify that, x to the power of 3 minus 12, and I'll fix the window here. Standardize that. Let's do a rhyme in just a little bit lower. There we go. You can see it's between 2 and 3 on the x-axis. Okay. So it comes down to solving this equation, and our Newton's method formula is x sub subscript n plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. Okay, so f of xn is equal to xn cubed minus 12. And f prime of xn will be the derivative of that, which is 3xn squared.
And I just need to pause for a second because I would like to shut my window. All right, sorry about that. I am back. Okay, so we will go xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn is xn cubed minus 12 divided by <coughs> f prime of xn is 3 xn squared. Here's how we should probably type it in the calculator like that with all those brackets. Okay, and so a good starting point is x0 equals 3. Okay, so this is what I would want you to show me on a quiz, all of this stuff written, and then just all of the iterations. So we have to go put 3 in here. So I'm going to go 3 minus brackets, brackets on the top, 3 to the power of 3 minus 12 divided by 3 times 3 squared. Okay, so notice there's an extra 3 in there that's not going to be replaced with the word answer. A couple of them actually. All right, so there's the first iteration, 2.4 repeating. Now we will go and replace all of the x zeros with the word answer. So go second function, enter, to get this up again. The first three was an x zero, so let's replace that with answer. 3 to the power of 3, it's x0 to the power of 3, so just this first 3 needs to be replaced with answer, not the power of 3, certainly not the minus 12. <coughs> and then we have 3 times xn squared, so that the second 3 here was an x0, let's replace that with answer. Boom, there's x2, 2.299. Oh five one 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 seven. Press enter again, two point two eight nine. Four six eight seven oh four. X four is a little bit different. 2.289, 428486. And what are we going to get for x5? Almost the same except for that last decimal place. Wow. 2.289, 428485. And if I press enter again, yes, I get the same thing. So there's my answer for x5. And we were looking for an approximation to the cube root of 12. So if you wanted to do the cube root of 12, there we go. Looking good. Okay, let's check out example three. <coughs> Find the roots for that cubic there. The function would be like this. Let's do a sketch of the graph.
x to the power of 3 plus 4x squared plus 13x plus 18. Okay, so there's our graph. Kind of looks like it almost goes right through negative 2. Okay, so it goes through the y-axis up a little higher up here, right? Okay, so here is the Newton's method formula. I'll give you the Newton's method formula on any quiz or test. And actually for this question, guys, I even give you the x0, where to start, like which point to start with. So xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn is going to be xn cubed plus 4 times xn squared plus 13 times xn plus 18. And on the bottom is the derivative of that, 3xn squared plus 8xn plus 13. Okay, and I think a good starting point would be x0 equals negative 3. And so then what we have to do is, oh boy, I'm going to put it in brackets. Negative 3 goes in here and in all of the other spots. So minus main bracket and then bracket on the top. Negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 to the power of 3 plus 4 times negative 3 squared. So I'm putting the negative 3 in brackets too. Plus 13 times negative 3 plus 18 and then close the bracket on the top of the fraction, and then divide it by 3 times negative 3 squared, plus 8 times negative 3, plus 13. Close the bracket on the bottom of the fraction, and then close the main brackets around the fraction. Okay, and so x1 is negative 2.25. Okay, now we have to replace all of those negative 3s in brackets with the word answer. And notice if you just try to arrow up, I can't arrow anywhere. And so that's why we have to go second function, enter. And now it lets me arrow up. And I have to replace this negative 3 with answer. Okay, and notice when I do that, it actually just replaces the negative sign. And it sort of leaves that 3 a little residual 3, I guess, because it's two characters, and so it just replaces the first character. So you actually have to sit on the 3 and then press this delete button, which is right beside the arrow. So go delete. Go over to this negative 3. Second function answer. Delete that 3. 4 times negative 3 squared. So I'm going to go answer in here. Delete that. This was an answer. This one was an answer. That one was an answer. And enter. Okay, so there's x2. Negative 2.015337.
x3 looks like that, negative 2.4 zeros. 52713. And then we get negative 2.1234568 zeros and then a 1. And hit enter again, and we land perfectly on negative 2, as suspected. And then look at that. As I start to hit enter, we just repeat at negative 2. So there's our answer, and that is how you do example 3. So that is Newton's method, everybody. Um, again, I'll send you a link for a virtual TI-83 calculator that hopefully you can get on a computer or laptop, and we'll go from there. So the homework is use Newton's method to solve the following. For this one, I would encourage you to start at an x0 of 2. For number 2, an x0 of 2 would be good as well. And then there is also homework from the textbook, page 229. Numbers 15 to 18. And with number 15, maybe start at an x0 of 2 again. Number 16, there's actually two solutions in number 16. So start with an x0 of negative 1.5 for one of them. And then with the other, start at an x0 of 1.2. And with number 17, there are two solutions as well. And there's some trig involved. So make sure you are in radians. Start with an x0 of 0 0.3 and continue from there. And with the other solution, an x0 of 2. And number 18, there are two solutions as well. Try an x0 of negative 1.5. And then with the other one, try an x0 of positive 1.5. And continue the iterations from there. All right, there you go, everybody. That is Newton's method. Let me know if you're having any problems. And uh, I will talk to you soon.